Sunny. In the previous episode on Thermometer, we introduced the Thermometer Shed, Stevenson Screen. We did! Also the wet bulb and dry bulb thermometers, maximum and minimum thermometers, etc. Weather Observer! Weather Observer! You promised to introduce the soil temperature, grass temperature, and heat index! Alright, let's start with the soil thermometers. Sunny, watch out! Don't step on the short fences. There are shallow soil thermometers inside. Shallow soil thermometers? Oh, there they are! If they weren't surrounded by the short fences, I really wouldn't know there were thermometers here. That's why we put the short fences, to avoid people accidentally stepping on the thermometers. Soil temperatures refer to underground temperatures at the depths of 0.05 meters, 0.1 meters, 0.2 meters, 0.5 meters, 1.0 meter, 1.5 meters, and 3.0 meters. The measurements are usually for agrometeorology. Platinum resistance thermometers are used to measure the soil temperatures automatically. There are mercury and glass thermometers next to them for backup purposes. To measure shallow soil temperatures at the depths of 0.05 meters, 0.1 meters, and 0.2 meters, we use bent stem mercury and glass thermometers. By burying the bulb of the thermometer at the prescribed depth, the temperature of the soil can be read on site. Here are the soil thermometers for measuring at other depths. The backup mercury and glass thermometers are mounted in vertical tubes with their bulbs embedded in wax or metallic paint. The wax or metallic paint serves as a means to maintain the temperature reading temporarily. So when the thermometers are taken out from the vertical tubes to the ground surface for reading the data, the influence of the surrounding environment causing a deviation of the soil temperature can be prevented. Then there's grass temperature. Grass temperature is the temperature on the surface of short grass. The observatory has installed automatic grass temperature thermometers at Taimoshan, Takuling, and Kings Park weather stations. Due to direct exposure of the sensors to the sun, temperatures measured between 8 a.m. and 5 p.m. may not reflect the true grass temperature. Hence, the observatory website only shows the grass temperature from 5 p.m. to 8 a.m. the next day. On cold winter nights, when the grass temperature drops to near zero degrees Celsius, the water vapor in the air may condense into frost on the ground. When the observatory issues or cancels the frost warning, it also takes the grass temperature as a reference. Since frost can damage crops, grass temperature information can help farmers decide whether precautions should be taken to protect crops. Finally, Let's have a look at the observatory's in-house developed heat stress monitoring system. Developed by the observatory? That's amazing! This heat stress monitoring system was successfully registered as a patent in Hong Kong in 2009, which is the first patented scientific invention of the observatory. Sunny, the origin of the heat stress monitoring system is closely related to horses. Horses? The observatory started the development of the heat stress monitoring system to provide the most critical weather data for the Hong Kong co-organized Olympic and Paralympic equestrian events in 2008. The most critical weather data? Yes. This system can measure the stress level that an animal or a human body can bear under high temperature. Hong Kong is hot and humid in the summer. Such weather can make horses uncomfortable. According to the guidelines of the Federation Equestre Internationale, when the heat stress index rises to between 30 and 32 degrees, additional measures must be taken to prevent horses from overheating. If the index reaches 33 degrees or above, the very hot weather is more likely to harm the health of horses, and veterinary advice must be consulted before the competition can continue. The heat stress index provided by the observatory provides an objective reference for the equestrian competitions. The system consists of three thermometers. Sunny, can you recognize what temperatures those thermometers are measuring? I know! The white box that looks like a Stevenson screen measures the dry bulb temperature! Right! This design uses the same principle as the Stevenson screen. It must maintain good ventilation and avoid the influence of direct sunlight and rain. The one with a wet cloth must be measuring the natural wet bulb temperature! Brilliant! The natural wet bulb temperature reflects the influence of humidity, wind speed, and sun exposure on the temperature. What's the black instrument measuring? Um. It's measuring the globe temperature. Globe temperature? What's that? 
Globe temperature is the temperature measured by a thermometer installed inside a hollow black copper globe. The way people feel about the temperature is different from the data measured by a thermometer. The human body is affected by radiant heat from the surrounding environment. Even at the same temperature, sometimes we feel very hot, but sometimes we don't. Oh yes! In summer, although it's the same temperature of 30 degrees Celsius, I don't feel hot when it's windy. But when there's no wind, it's so hot that I just want to stay in an air-conditioned room. The environment greatly influences the sensation of heat. Sunshine, humidity, and wind speed all have an influence. We will feel hotter under strong sunlight, humid, and light wind weather. When it's humid, the atmosphere contains a lot of water molecules, which inhibit the evaporation of sweat. Light wind is unfavorable for bringing heat away from the surface of the skin. If the human body heat can't be released, people will feel stuffy and uncomfortable. This globe temperature is to simulate the feeling of heat. Why are the other two thermometers in white, but this one's in black? Black has a higher capability to absorb radiant heat than other colors. Therefore, the temperature measured by the black globe thermometer can effectively reflect the effect of radiant heat, which is the feeling of heat. The heat index can be calculated after obtaining the dry bulb temperature, the natural wet bulb temperature, and the globe temperature. What's the use of the Hong Kong heat index? This index is developed by analyzing the relationship between people being hospitalized and the heat stress data. It is especially suitable for the humid environment of Hong Kong. In general, when the index is around 30 degrees or above, the public should take appropriate precautions to prevent adverse health effects brought on by the hot weather. The observatory will also take the Hong Kong heat index as a reference when issuing or cancelling the very hot weather warning. The system also uses solar energy to provide electricity to achieve the goal of environmental protection by reducing the use of energy. It uses wireless communication technology to provide real-time heat index information where covered by the wireless network. Are those communication antennas on the top? No. Let me give you a hint. We mentioned its related uses in the episode on Equipment Rain Gauge. Ah! I know! All right, that's all for this episode on meteorological measurement of temperatures. We'll introduce other meteorological instruments in the next episode. I'm looking forward to it! Goodbye! Goodbye! <laughs>